What's up guys? It's your girl Rubel and welcome to my channel! So for today's vlog, we will be talking about chapter 9 of Ian Stewart's Nature's Number. And by we, I mean my friends from school and they will be joining me today. Since it's quarantine season, we should always remember to take safety measures and stay at home. So let's call them! One eternity later. Oh no, someone is calling. Hi guys. Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Hello everyone. Say hello to my vlog guys and introduce yourself. My name is John. What's up? It's me, Alexi. Hello, my name is Kida. So what are you guys doing right now? Nothing, just eating. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. <coughs> just kidding guys, I have a sore throat. <coughs> oh, I just finished watering the plants outside because it's getting quite dark. I think it's going to rain soon, so I, I finished it quickly. Washing dishes like usual. This pandemic is really counseling a lot and it's chaotic. But actually, there are tons of stuff to do at home, right? Like what we're doing at this very moment. Play with pets, eat or do the chores, the simple things. And speaking about simplicity and chaos, that is our topic for this vlog. Yes, and from chapter 9 of Ian Stewart's Nature's Numbers, the author gave three examples of simplicity emerging from complexity. I do believe that this world is simple. Normally, we would look at an object just as it is. But there is actually more behind a particular object. Like, that object is more than just its physical appearance, its simplicity. There's complexity. Simplicity tends to disappear when we look below the surface. According to Ian Stewart on page 127, when we look closer behind the simplicities of the world, we would realize the complex, much complicated explanation of an object. One example from the book is the drop of water, just a simple everyday phenomenon. And we've always known its shape the same as a teardrop, right? As simple as it is, but actually it's not. From the simple dripping of water, there's actually a lot going on than just it looking like a teardrop. Behind the drop of water, <laughs> mathematics can get complicated. It forms a sort of needle called singularity until the drip eventually detaches. Several researchers and scholars ought to find answers to the singularity found in the drops. One is a particular kind of solution to the equations of fluid flow called singularity solution. They performed experiments using mixtures of water, glycerol, to get different viscosities. They also um, carried out computer simulations and developed the theoretical approach via similarity solutions. Imagine all of these behind a single drop of water. I mean, who could have thought that dripping of water could be so busy, right? The second example is population dynamics. As what refer on page 132, it reflects a long tradition of mathematical modeling in which the changes in populations of creating creatures represented by differential equations. There is a system of rules set up to model the main biological influences at work. Here is an example of such rules. If a rabbit is next to grass, it moves to the position of the grass and eats it. If a fox is next to a rabbit, it moves to the position of the rabbit and eats it. At each stage of the game, a rabbit breeds new rabbits with some chosen probability. A fox that has not eaten for a certain number of moves will die. A group of organisms of the same species that occupy an area 
and one of the characteristics of this is the ability to reproduce. It is a work has been analyzing new populations of creatures to grow, develop, and sometimes collapse. Lastly, Fibonacci. It is said that um, most flowers have a number of petals taken from the series of what we call Fibonacci numbers. Funny how we grew up knowing that flowers normally have different numbers of petals depending on its kind. However, it says in the book that it somehow has something to do with genes. This series was invented by Leonardo Fibonacci in 1200. This explains how certain the series of numbers can be closely related to the genetics of living organisms, like in the arrangement of petals, leaves, and the like. With that being said, it can be reflected to the topic of geometry, the spirals, and other possible figures of an organism can show. What's even more interesting about this is the so-called golden number or phi. It is the number of perfection. But then again, there is beauty in simplicity. To conclude everything, here's what the author said in page 142. Three examples from very different parts of science, each in its own way an eye-opener. And there is a common thread, an even deeper message, buried within them, not that nature is complicated, no, nature is, in its own subtle way, simple. That's right! He also added, those simplicities do not present themselves to us directly. Instead, nature leaves clues for the mathematical detectives to puzzle over. When we look closer, that's where chaos within simplicity can be found. Fascinating, right? Alright, so that is all for today's vlog. Thank you for joining me today, guys. Bye! Everyone, stay safe and I hope you learned something from this vlog. And always remember to wash your hands, take your medicines, vitamins, you know, stay safe, stay at home. And take some showers. Bye!